The next generation are really our future, and we have to honor the youth in our country. This episode of Style with Roses is thrilling because it features two budding roses who are creatives. The creative industry is where our youth needs to be because with their gifts, their passions, they can butt out to be whoever they intended to be because it can be for them. So join me on the next episode of Style with Roses as I share with you two budding roses, Luenje and Nyemba. Don't go away. Stay with me and let's catch up with these two. Today, I'm hanging around with two budding roses, and I really want to take you out of your comfort zone so that you're nice and comfortable. See, I'm also trying to be very youthful, <laughs> but that's the advantage I have. Hey, Auntie Rose is always very cool. Mm, <laughs> right. right, so I'm just going to ask you some 10 quick questions. We have what we call the Rosie Minute. So don't overthink it. It's not technical. It's not 10 out of 10. It's not, I know you're very clever, but don't worry about the answers you give. It's just to break you down so we get to know you better are you ready so in one minute i'll i'll be swapping alternatively between the two of you and i'll start with you luenje strangest place you've ever been to um never <laughs> preferred choice of camera miss vlogger canon uh, <laughs> did you ever use a cassette player yes favorite time period morning afternoon evening evening ah your spirit animal a panda <laughs> your favorite flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. Your biggest inspiration? Ooh. Anyone creative. Favorite piece of advice given to you about vlogging? Oh, about vlogging. Be yourself. Be yourself. Who would you swap places with for a day, Luanji? Uh, local, international. No local. questions asked, just okay. off the Local, I'd say Natasha Van der Maas. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. Okay. What is 70 times 3? 210. <laughs> you have to think about that first. <laughs> Math. Math, I'm telling you. Last time you played Chiat. Two years ago. Mm, there's still that child in you. What's the worst thing about flying for you? Turbulence. What would you change about the world? Mm, too many things. Too many things. Right, we'll talk about that. So... As a young vlogger, do you prefer external or internal content? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. I want the same question for you as well, actually, Wenje. As a young fashion designer, do you prefer youth or oldies? Youth. Definitely youth. <laughs> <laughs> Biased. Okay, I'm not supposed to say anything. <laughs> what is the one assumption people have about you? That, that is not true. That I'm stuck up and unapproachable. I'll give you the same question, Manji. What is the one assumption they make about that you? That I'm always upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my face. It's just your face. Relatable. It is, eh? And there we go. You see exciting stuff coming up in this particular episode that is definitely for the youth. So in a bit, I'll be back with these two. I'm hanging out with Luenje, the fashion designer, and Nyemba, the vlogger. Don't go away. We will be right back when they join me on the couch. See you soon. Hello, I'm Nyamba Tembo. I'm a budding rose and I'm hanging out with Auntie Rose on Style with Roses.
and welcome back. Just in case you just joined us, you missed the opening session of this special youthful episode where it's a fun day up in Style with Roses talk show. That is because today I'm hanging out with two budding roses whom I'm so excited to be sitting with today. Tendai Luenje of Luenje Fashion. She prefers to be called Luenje. That's her surname, but she prefers it to be called that. And I've got Nyemba Tembo, who is a vlogger. So very interesting creatives. This is entrepreneurship of our times. They do things in their own way. So let's hear how the journeys are in terms of how they got to where they are. Hello, young ladies. Hello. How's it going? All good. Happy Feeling, to be here. Yeah, happy to be. I'm just so happy to be here. I'm just like, oh, I'm having fun. I've, I've also brought my youth side. Oh, we love it. <laughs> so I'll start with you, Nyan, but I know that you've got credit for um, being one of the top vloggers for YouTube channels. Some of the things that are really up and happening on the internet platform. You've worked with local brands such as Zasu Africa, Fanta, international partnerships, including YouTube Premium and Amazon. We need to know how that works. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing in the diaspora and how you got there? So basically, I began my channel while still in New York because I just enjoyed watching YouTube videos and they were my entertainment. Like I didn't watch TV that much. So YouTube videos are like my safe space. And I just thought to myself, I can do this. Like it's something I definitely would like to do, but it was always one of those things where I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. You know, one of those things till my mom bought me a DSLR camera. And I decided to start recording videos of myself, but I wouldn't post them. So I just record them, not post them. And that's how it began, I should say. Um, then fast forward to when I actually moved back home to Zambia. Um, I don't want to say I didn't have friends, but I just didn't really fit in like at school and all of that. So my getaway kind of thing was YouTube. So I started filming again and this time I'm like, you know what? I'm going to post them. And I just started from there and it's been a great journey, I should say. Here I am now today. It looks like, like you know, eh? Yeah. It looks like it's been. So how long have you been away? Um, are you still away? Are you back home now? Currently, I'm at uni in the UK. So yeah. me being here right now is God's grace. Because <laughs> even though we're in the middle of a pandemic. But yes, I am currently in my final year studying broadcast journalism. And yeah, but I'll most likely be back soon. And then coming to you, Luenja, I know that you're acclaimed to have designed a gown that found itself at the Keynes Film Festival. You are now famous for dressing some of our top public profiles, ministers, cabinet ministers, no names mentioned, but as well as the Zambian celebrities. How's that going for you? Um, it's, it's exciting. First of all, I wouldn't think that I would, that I would reach at this point where I'm dressing a whole minister and celebrities who I, I didn't think I would meet before. But yeah, the journey has been exciting. It's Dressing celebrities is one of my favorite things to do apart from bridal wear mm. because I get to do things that are out there. For example, uh, dressing a celebrity that is bold. Mm. Um, so would, my creative would come out in that way. Right. Um, apart from that, my journey is, yeah, it's, it's up and down like everyone else's creative journey. But overall, it's just, it's been amazing. It has. And um, we're going to take a short break soon, but before we go there, I just want you to highlight the the inspiration behind being a fashion designer. I know you've studied for it. What what did you study? I studied fashion design mm -hmm. uh, in Cape Town for right. three years. So okay. I have a degree in fashion design. Um, I started in 2013, right. uh, finished in 2015. Then from there, then I started as a business. Fantastic. And I'll hold you to that. So when we come back, let's find out how studying for a degree in fashion design actually has enhanced Luenje's fashion journey, as well as let's find out more about how Nyeba gets those YouTube followers going to and she gets the ka for it. Don't go away. We will be right back. You're watching Style with Rose's talk show with Rose CBC. Be back in a bit. Hi, my name is Tendai from Luenje. I'm a budding rose hanging out with Rose CVC on Star with Roses.
welcome back. I hope you've been following. Today is a very youthful day where I'm hanging out with two creative budding roses who have been in the diaspora and they've come back home and are finding their way in their spaces. One is a vlogger, the other one is a fashion designer. But I'll let them tell the story themselves. So, Luenje, starting with you, being a fashion designer, you've had the privilege of creating a gown that actually stood out at the Cannes Film Festival all the way in France. How did that happen and how did it make you feel? Um, okay, I think it came as a last minute thing. Okay. So I had 24 hours to make a dress for um, Miss Nancy Mulilo. Okay. She was, she's an actress in I Am A Witch, the okay. film. Um, yeah, so she had to go uh, for the red carpet and to showcase the film there. And the project came to me last minute because he had a dress before, but it wasn't up to the standard that she wanted yet. So we had to come up with something within 24 hours. Wow. Yeah, so he just made a simple but elegant red dress for her. And it, it came out really good. With good reviews, of course. Yes. That's how I knew about it. Well done. So in terms of uh, vlogging, let me come back to you, um, Nyemba. Your YouTube channel re reached milestones of 5,000 to 10,000 10, subscribers in two weeks. And I know for your generation, it's such a big deal having subscribers. How did you rake up those numbers, girl? It's one of those things. Like with YouTube, it's very hit or miss. You know, it's like you have one video go viral and then five videos just stay stagnant. But with what happened there is I had, I think, two vlogs mm -hmm. go viral and they were just like everyday Zambia vlogs. And so they reached like the diaspora and people were commenting on it like, oh my gosh, I didn't know we had Zambian vloggers and this and that. <laughs> so that's how it like racked up the numbers up to 10K. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> and there you go. Now you were talking about... Um finding yourself in the YouTube space just because you felt you hadn't been able to reintegrate back home and therefore you, you went into YouTube. So now you see how that worked out for you. Yes. Do you get friends on the YouTube channel? Do you make social friends? I feel like I have friends in my subscribers because even though we don't actually physically meet, I chat with them in the comments all the time and it's just like, they're just such lovable and oh. I appreciate them so much. Nice. Luenje, when we come back home, and you're in the fashion industry, there's always a misconception that fashion designers or anybody in the creative space is probably there because they didn't study for it. Maybe they flunked at school and all. You've actually studied fashion design and you're doing it at international level. How do you cope with the minimizing of the gift that you have? How do you deal with that? Okay, I think the first thing that I always tell people is that you have to be able to um, ask people to address me is as a designer because tailors have just a negative connotation to it so as much as I am a tailor as well I'm a designer so that's designer plus tailoring okay. um, it's you just have to show your work your work just has to speak for you mm. so then if I make something that is on a level that is, is never seen before then it will give me the respect that I deserve Mm. And having studied it, I mean, there are people who make it even without studying it. Mm. And they are really, really good designers out there. They just didn't have the opportunity to study. I was just one of the lucky few. Right. Yeah, so it's just your work just has to speak for you. It has to show that you deserve the respect that you, that need. you need. Owning your standards and your excellence. Yes. And that's what our Zambian young creatives are all about. And that's what we're talking about. So when we come back more into Luenje and Yemba's journey, we're having a very youthful day here on Style with Rosa. Don't go away. Come back in a bit.
Welcome back again. I hope you've been on this journey with us. This special, youthful episode on Style with Roses is having a great conversation so far with two creators. One is a vlogger who has been based in the UK, and Yemba, who has now more than 22,000 subscribers, and her content in their language is bomb. Then I've got Luenje, who is an amazing fashion designer, and she creates roses on wires. I don't know how she does that, but hey, that's what creativity does, right? Good. So I'm back, I'm back with you, Luenje. Um, what would you say has been the most challenging aspect of your journey as a fashion designer back home in Zambia? Um, the most challenging aspect has been showing yourself on a different level. Because if there are countless designers, so you have to stand out some way, somehow, for you to be shown, to, to get the, the spotlight on you, to come out and show your talent and show what you can bring to the fashion industry mm. as an individual, because everyone is different in their own way. So you have to show your difference. Right. So that's the challenging part. Otherwise... It's, it's just fun. If you're sitting here and you've got the accolades, you're doing it, girl. So it can be, right. Mm. Yeah, but what would you say? I mean, this is fairly new to us. I mean, I can't, oh, you know, old school. <laughs> Vlogging is something that's like, I'm not going to tell my business all out there and tell them what I'm doing. How do you manage in, in this space? Like you said, it's not a very Zambian popular thing. Now it's wow. growing. Well, yeah, now it's definitely growing because the time I started, there were like practically no Zambian vloggers based in Zambia at mm, the time right. and they were countable but now there's so many but just like um having to prove myself that you know I'm good at what I do and with some people it's just like oh you're wasting time you're telling people your business for what like yeah but, you know from the seeking attention exactly from the beginning I've like seen the vision of where I want to go with like vlogging and the whole thing I see it as a stepping stone right to just doors opening in different aspects me being here right now would not be possible if I hadn't started vlogging you know right just me working with all all the brands I've worked with wouldn't have been possible without starting, just starting. Me being able to inspire people to just be themselves wouldn't have happened that way because sometimes people, I mean, in my vlogs and stuff, I'll start the vlog off looking a mess. And then at the end of it, it's like I've showered, I've gotten ready. And just that like realness and rawness resonates with my subscribers because they see that I'm normal i'm a regular girl just like yeah them, and you shouldn't be afraid to be who you are mm -hmm. in front of people you know the world <laughs> yeah and your typical subscribers is our young generation so do you believe that vlogging in a way helps the youthful generation deal with self-esteem issues and just finding their own way in their purpose definitely because it helped me as well back when even before i started when i would watch all these youtubers i would admire just how confident they were, how they weren't afraid to step in front of the camera, not looking their best and mm. stuff like that. And it's just like that confidence is something I emulate and hope my subscribers get some of that. You make money out of vlogging. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear more about that. And you, Luenji, of course. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm on your client list, but I'm not going to tell. <laughs> it's your age. But one thing that I really find um, working with you as well and having walked a journey with you as well is the particular attention to detail. So when you look at differentiating yourself, how do you differentiate yourself in the rates that you charge your clients to maintain your business? Because it is a business and that's your livelihood. How have you structured that? Uh, first of all, I actually appreciate when someone compliments my detail okay. because that's one thing that I try to strive for, specific detail and then quality. Right. So those two, I would like someone to see a dress and know that it's done by Gwenje. Nice. Based on the quality, obviously the design as well, and the detail. So those two are what I use to put myself out there as specializing in those detail and quality. Nice. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, as you've heard for yourselves, two young creatives finding their way in their own space and making money out of it. How can they teach others to do the same? We'll find out when we come back after the break because they get to pass the rose. Stay right there. <laughs>
Welcome back to Style with Roses with me, Rose CBC. So the important thing about the youthful generation is you guys are very strategic, I must say. You start early, you're bold, you go out there and you do your thing without really worrying about what other people think. But I'll start with you, Nyamba. I want to know um, what value does content creation have for people in yours, in your own and future generations? What's the value in just talking on the YouTube? <laughs> I feel like, okay, for me personally, it's helped me step into like my own, you know, and kind of step into my purpose because I feel the most alive when I'm doing what I love, which is just creating content, vlogging and all of that. Mm. And even for the future generation, like the digital space is now expanding. It's growing every single day. And if it's something you genuinely love to do, I would encourage you to do it because it's whatever sets your soul on fire, do more of that. So it's, it's a way of communicating and expressing yourself. 100%. Yeah. Because you guys are weird. You know, we, we, we just used to get smacked. You guys have these mental health issues. No pay attention to your mind and your heart and your soul. Is that an expressive point for, for making you feel is. whole? Yeah, it's like do more of what makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. If that's vlogging, if that's fashion designing, do more of that. And yeah, like you'll flourish in what, in your purpose, I should say. Nice. Yeah. So before I, I go over to Luenja, just one quick one. What is your advice for vloggers of the content maybe not to put out there? Do you put everything out there or is there stuff you can hold back on? I put a lot out there, I'd say, but I also don't put a lot out there. It's one of those things where for the fact that I consider my subscribers my friends, mm -hmm. I know that with certain topics, even though they may be a bit sensitive, I'm definitely speaking to at least one person out there and can help them out. So even topics such as like mental health, for example, it's something that's quite sensitive and you have to be careful in how you go about speaking on it. But if they see someone they look up to talking about something that's so, I guess, sensitive and something that they're going through, it helps to some extent. And I always say, if I've helped one person, then I've done my job, just one person. But obviously if it's more than that, even better. <laughs> Does a vlogger have responsibility for their subscriber following? To some extent. <laughs> it's like we do, but we don't, you know? It's, you just continue to be you, do you, and the subscribers come. But be sensitive to who your audience is yes. and what they want to see or hear. Yeah, because it's not just about me and what I want to post. Exactly. What do they want to watch? What do they want to hear? Yeah, because you're an influencer. In, exactly. In At things. the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Luenja, I want to pose that same question to you. In the fashion designer context, do, what, what value does being a fashion designer in the now and future generation have? on economies or life in general why do we have to dress well or have all these beautiful fantastic detailed outfits i think apart from what she said uh, about expression self-expression uh, in terms of fashion design i don't think or i don't see in the near future when we stop wearing clothing so it can be a basic t-shirt or something extravagant it's still fashion so adding to the value that it adds to it it's it's everywhere. Fashion is a trillion, if I can say, trillion uh, dollar industry. It absolutely is. Yeah, so it covers everyone from birth to death. It covers everyone. So the value that we add as designers, uh, apart from self-expression, is the need for clothing. So Good clothing. Yes. I like that. And for sure, it's Africa's time. And um, the lessons that we've learned, all eyes are on us and everybody's looking for ideas from Africa and expressing themselves through fashion design. So I'm having such a good time, but we have to take a quick break because we really need to hear these two young ladies pass the rose. Quick break and we'll be right back.
Welcome back. You are still watching Style with Roses and we've had a thrilling time with two budding roses. And um, how best do you actually share your own information until you're speaking to your own? So, ladies, I can call you ladies because you are ladies, first of all. So, ladies, we have a tradition on the Style with Roses um, talk show, which is to inspire and pass on what we ourselves have gone through onto somebody else who may not know what to do, when to do it, so that they too know that it can be. Whatever obstacles that you face in your journey, you can actually overcome. So I'm going to invite my assistant to please hand me two beautiful roses. So these two beautiful roses to us represent the budding roses. We've heard this today where you talk about your own experiences. You've been privileged to go and study in Cape Town, have a degree in fashion design. You've been based in the UK, learned journalism there, and even studied through Zanis as well. So coming back home, you are now looked at as international influencers. But there's a little rural girl child who doesn't have the opportunities that you have. They may not be able to have access to even be able to vlog. They may not have access to understand how they can put together detail and have the clientele that you have. What would you say to that little rural girl who is looking up to you and finding that they want to be like you? I want you to speak to them in a, in a very heartful way, in a very short time, and tell them how you would inspire them so that they too can be who they were intended to be. This one is for you, Luenje, and the other one is for Yunya. Who's going first? Who's feeling emotional? Luenje, you go first. Over to you. Okay. Um, I would like to pass this rose to any girl or boy that has art in them that they would want to express to the world. I think every there's space for every everyone to showcase what they have inside them. And for those that don't have the opportunity to say for like us to go where we need to go, to get to study for what we want to do, I would just encourage them to keep believing in themselves. Apart from believing in themselves, I would like to give them the courage to show who they are in the space that they have, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, and just anywhere they, they go, anywhere. I would encourage them to show who they are to express themselves and that that can be a starting point. Beautiful. Thank you, Luenje. And Yemba, you go for it. Okay. So, dear girl child, I encourage you to keep your dreams alive. No matter what your situation looks like right now, it's not the end of the journey. God has got you and you yourself need to just stay focused and have the end goal in mind. Whatever you want to achieve is achievable no matter where you come from. We're from Zambia and not everything that we aspire to do is necessarily recognized as successful, I should say, especially being like a creative and all of that. But I just encourage you to keep going, stay focused, put God first and just know what you want and don't stop at nothing to make your dreams a reality. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's what we're here for. We're here to inspire the next generation. You've heard it for yourselves. These are two young budding roses that had an opportunity to be exposed in the diaspora and they brought their gifts of purpose back home. So before we go to a quick close, if people want to follow you, following for you is big, I, I can imagine. Yeah, but how do they follow you? How do they find you? You can find me on YouTube, first of all. Um, it's just Nyemba Tembo on YouTube. On Instagram, I have a funny handle. Don't ask questions. But on Instagram, it's at I put the beebs on my back, as in Justin Bieber type of beebs. <laughs> yeah. And on Twitter, it's just at Nyemba with three S's. Lovely. And you, Luenje, where do we find you? Uh, I'm a bit boring compared to... <laughs> <laughs> so it's just Tendai Luenje on everything. And then for um, my brand itself, it's Luenje. Luenje Fashion Brand. That's on Instagram and Facebook. And of course, Instagram is where we get to see all these beautiful designs. And we get to see all your quirky videos sometimes on there. Very expressive. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun hanging out with the two lovely young ladies. We hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as we did. Very useful. 
We want to wish our youth an ongoing confidence to understand that even for you, it can be. And from me, Rose CBC, just remember, wherever you go, you need to bud, blossom, and flourish because that's what roses do. Until the next time, bye-bye for now. Keep on chasing that sunlight. You can flourish if you do try. Pass them, let them see you in your new shine. Shine like gold. Bloom like a rose. It's a long way from the ground up. But you keep it moving, keep it non-stop. Shine like gold. Bloom like a rose. Shine like bloom just like a rose. Just like a rose.